Hi guys, this is Wataru. This video is on a book called Born a Crime by the host of The Daily Show and a comedian, Trevor Noah. For me, Trevor Noah is this funny guy who does stand-up comedy touching on racial and cultural differences that he saw and experienced throughout his life. My favourite one of his is the one that he touches on Zambia. You can watch it, but if you want to watch it, I advise you to be ready because you might feel it's a bit inappropriate. Anyway, the book is based on his life in South Africa during the time when apartheid was still in place. For those who don't know, apartheid was basically a policy set by the government to divide the whites and non-whites, and non-whites which includes coloured, Indian and the blacks. And during this time, whites and blacks for example, could not sit on the same bench at a park or use the same washroom. Whites were given better opportunities than the non-whites, and non-whites were obviously oppressed not being given what whites got. So in this video, I will divide the story into three parts. After covering these three parts, I will state my takeaway points from this book. Before proceeding further, I would like to give disclaimers. Those who want to read this book, it will be a spoiler, so don't watch this video. But if you want to know the gist of it, it's a perfect one for you. And if this is your first time watching this video from the channel, Please click on the subscribe button to subscribe and comment down below after watching for your opinion. Then without further ado, let's get started. Part 1. Literally born a crime. Trevor Noah was born in Johannesburg, South Africa, under a Hosa mother Patricia and a Swiss German father Robert during the time of apartheid. Patricia was a black and Robert was white. So, of course during this time, making a child between a black and a white was a big no-no, but it happened, and he was born a crime. Growing up during apartheid as a kid, Trevor weren't allowed to play outside with kids because being a mixed kid, he was not allowed being seen by the authority in a black neighborhood in Soweto, or even worse, with a black mother. If found, both parents were to put in jail and had to spend years there, while Trevor would have been taken away to be an orphan. Trevor was raised only by his mother Patricia as his parents weren't married but Trevor saw his father Robert every once a week after church. His mother, Patricia, was a very religious person. Together with Trevor, she went to three different churches which covered four days in a week and this allowed Trevor to interact with communities of all races in the country and learned how to mingle with them. But these frequent visits to churches made Trevor experience what only happens in the Hollywoods which was getting thrown out of a car. So the story goes like this. After visiting a church, they took a minibus to head home. It was already dark at that time, and the bus driver who picked them up was lecturing Trevor's mom on how she shouldn't be out alone with the kid dark at night. As he was lecturing, it got more abusive and worse. So the mom requested to drop them off, but the bus driver refused to let them get off. In that hostile situation, the mother knew that if she didn't do anything at that moment to escape, they were going to get kidnapped. So as the car stopped at the next traffic light, she drew Trevor who was sleeping out of the car and soon after she jumped off and they ran. It's a crazy story. I think I'd be gone if I was in that situation. But even after that incident, church visiting did not stop. His mom Patricia was a very determined woman. Once she decided to do something, she would do it despite the circumstances. So growing up as a mixed in South Africa was not the easiest thing for Trevor because this meant he didn't belong anywhere. He wasn't black enough, he wasn't white enough or even coloured enough because he grew up in a black family. But to survive and be able to mingle with people, he discovered the importance of languages. So in South Africa, there are 11 official languages. In this society of diversity, Trevor picked up six languages, including English, Afrikaans, Zulu, Xhosa, Tswana, and Tsonga. He says that knowing various languages allow you to belong anywhere, regardless of how you look. It, it is a key to be accepted in the community and also to escape danger. I think this is true as well, and I remember Nelson Mandela saying something similar. He said, if you talk to a man in a language he understands, that goes into his head. If you talk to him in his language, that goes into his heart. Then let's move on to part 2, Vagueness of Apartheid. Trevor says that 
During apartheid, the definition of white, coloured, Indian and black was a vague thing. Even if a two completely white couple gives birth to a kid, if the authority decides that the kid is coloured, then the kid is coloured. And there were a few ways to actually determine the label, and one of them was called a pencil test. So how it works is that the officer puts a pencil between your hair, and if it fell out, then you are white. If not, you are coloured. In addition to this, the other way for the officer to determine the label is to randomly just decide as he wish. Under this situation, the white couple must decide 1. Give up the white status and live as coloured in a coloured area with a coloured kid. Or, parents split, in which mom lives in a coloured area with the kid and the dad continue living in the white area to make living and support them. Trevor also says that people could move status by the change of label, which further emphasises how vague this thing is. So the coloured person can be promoted to a white person. And a white person can be demoted to a black person as well. Although the system was vague and so ridiculous, it still made everyone to hate each other, pulling each other's legs to fight for rights and privileges. And this caused more division among people. Apartheid even affected his relationship. His valentine was taken away by a white boy called Lorenzo, even though she said yes to Trevor prior to the Valentine's Day. Even after the apartheid was lifted, the effect was still strong. Because of his skin colour and he was mixed, he didn't belong to any group in school. He was an outsider. Although he clicked with the black kids the most, they took minibuses to come and go back from school, and Trevor came to school by car, so he couldn't fully belong in there either. So basically he was a chameleon, blends in with people well, liked by people, but didn't belong anywhere. He was alone. There was also a story of once where he could have been expelled from the school for shoplifting with his partner Teddy. But since the videotape of the security camera was in black and white, and the principal and the mall cop officer who caught Trevor in for the talk strongly believed that the other thief on the tape was white, he managed to escape. Trevor says that they were so deep into their own construct of race that they didn't see that the thief was just right in front of them. Let's go to part 3. Bang! Trevor was raised by his mother, Patricia, and lived by themselves until his mother met a kind mechanic called Abel. They met when Patricia brought her car for fixing to the garage where Abel was working at. Soon enough, she visited the garage even without the car required any fixing. So one day, when all adults were out and Trevor was teaching other kids how to create fire at the place Abel was staying, the magnifying glass and the matches which were left on the mattress caught on fire. It became a total disaster and this made the house owner kick Abel out of the place. And since then, he started living with Trevor and the mom in their new house in Eden Park. And eventually, Abel started his own garage at the house. Soon enough, they will get married, and Trevor will have two new brothers, Andrew and Isaac. This is when Patricia's life gets into absolute danger. Trevor says, although Abel was kind, he will be a different violent person when he gets drunk. As he started living in with his mother, and his business got into a worse situation, his drinking habit got worse as well. Eventually, he got very abusive and Trevor advised his mother to divorce and leave, but she says she can't, as if she did, he will kill them. At this moment, Trevor couldn't take it anymore and left the house. The mom also agreed to it for her son's safety. And years later, things got out of hand. On the way back from church, Abel, Patricia, Andrew, Isaac and Abel's extended family were in the car. Abel suddenly pulled into the driveway, he stopped, got out and said by pointing the gun to Trevor's mom, You stole everything from me, so I'll kill all of you. Everyone got off and Abel was pointing the gun at Patricia, he pulled the trigger, he shot her bum. And he shot few more times after that, but the bullet didn't launch, so a miracle happened. Using this as chance, Patricia tried to drive off with Andrew and Isaac, 
But then as she accelerated, she got shot from the back, bullet going right through her head and out. With blood all over the car, she was admitted to the hospital. The situation was chaotic and Trevor was only notified when the mom was in hospital from Andrew via phone call. Trevor got to the hospital as fast as he could. When he reached and after some time, another miracle happened. He was notified that there was no life-threatening injury for his mom Patricia. Even after such a horrific time, Patricia kept Trevor, who was crying in relief, with a joke. Look on the bright side, now you are the most good-looking one in the family. And in four days, she left the hospital. And on the seventh day, she resumed working. So the three main takeaway points are 1. Be bold and not be afraid. What I learned is that, in most cases, the fear in you is much worse than the actual event that is going to occur. This is the key to achieve what you truly want in life. For example, Trevor's mom in particular was a bold woman. She feared nothing but God. She does what she thinks is rationally right and don't give up because it's going to be difficult. And this changed her fate. Unlike the typical blacks in South Africa at that time of apartheid where opportunity given for the black people were to work in a factory, she went out from the city of Soweto, place where the government confined blacks and her family, he allowed her to find opportunity and got her white collared job. 2. Do not be racist. Although this is widely understood as inappropriate and the majority of people share an equal view, I believe there is always a part of us in which we just want to jump into conclusion and use racial stereotypes on others, and this is usually to put others down. But doing this is just outdated in today's era where so many people from different origins have moved to different parts of the world. Regardless of what color your skin is, your personality will be shaped by where you grow up. I myself is a Japanese but raised in Malaysia, and my way of thinking is certainly different from a Japanese raised in Japan for the whole life. So you don't expect someone with certain skin color to possess the racial stereotypes that you grow up hearing. It is the same thing as someone saying, never judge a book by its cover. 3. Never put fault on others for your own mistake, like Abel and his failure in business and life. It was his fault to have not looked into what was needed to be changed. By putting faults on others just to maintain pride, you're getting opportunities for you to grow aside and letting go of chances to see what can actually be improved. So those are the three life lessons I took away from this book and hopefully these have changed your perspective in a better way. For more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button below and do comment below for your opinion. Thanks guys, peace out.